you want to know how to overcome your loneliness, get overwhelmed by it. Meet the bottom of it. Maybe you'll be on your knees, begging the universe for help, for relief. Maybe your resistance is so much that you'll need to have a, such an overwhelming to crack you, to break you. Maybe not, maybe you are easier going and some pressure on it and you will crack and break. And that's how it's going to end up. This is what's going to happen, you're going to crack and you're going to break. These layers of cynicism that you have about yourself, that it's too much the loneliness, that you really can't stand yourself, that you're really not good enough. This layer of cynicism, however thick it is, that's how much pressure life has to put on it. Because it's not true. There's no reason for you to hate yourself or to get bored or be, how I should say, ill with yourself. There's no reason for it. You're a masterpiece of the universe. Only one of you exists. And there's no reason for you to hate yourself. But okay, you stubborn and you insist and you resist to let go into yourself. So get overwhelmed as much as needed. Be on your knees if you need be until you are done, until there, until your this mind is humbled and there is nothing left of you until you lost. And then you win. I know the mind is afraid of the chaos because it's burning everything that you know and it's creating space, no offense, to restructure. I know this, you have no grasping point in this chaos. The self is in flame, you, have, you don't know anything anymore. It's a free fall. Everything that you have, you know, you look right, left, how to be in this moment, how to behave, how to, but if you let go into it, nothing helps. You're in a free fall. The only thing you have is your presence, your consciousness, everything around is in flame. The old self is dying, burning. You experience your own death. It's good to be near somebody who died and got reborn already in this moment. Sure, it's good. But even if not, it's not, when you think about it as an idea, it's like, oh no, I will die. But when you are there, actually, when you dare to go, your whole life, you've been prepared for it. What do you think? All these wounds that you have, and all this pain, and all this experience that you had, there were preparation. In this moment, you see, your whole life you were prepared for it. Even what I'm saying now, I'm telling you, do not take notes here. Because I know if you're receptive, you don't need to take notes. In this moment where you need, you'll see that what is, what is shared here will be with you there. Something will tell you, it's okay, let go. Stay calm, let go, it's, let it be. It takes you to a good place. But you can't take yourself there.
And this is why it cannot be made a spiritual theory. You can say, I know, but this is not knowing. This what I explain you here and everything is just, it's showing you the gate. You can't follow me, you can't make what I'm saying from you a spiritual theology or a dogma or anything like this to practice, you can't. What I'm sharing with you, I'm pointing to, here is the gate. When you're ready, enter. After the gate is a cliff. You will not know that you can fly before you jump. Sure, you'll go crazy. The difference between an awakened being and a crazy people in a mental hospital is that you're going through this madness consciously. You know that you are crazy. You know that you are mad. I mean, I don't know what's the criteria, what is normal, yeah? But these people who live in the matrix, in the mainstream, this is normal? I'll pass on that. This is normal, the way what we live our life here, this is, you know, what we did to this planet, what we did to our civilization, this is normal. Full of hate and genocides and wars and destructions and greed and jealousy and... Then I prefer to be crazy. And they think that you are crazy. You're not at home with Christmas trees and this, what? Well, <laughs> you're going to silence with your what? You're crazy, you're going to be in silence for one week, you, are, you really are crazy. <laughs> because you are taking the time for yourself to go in and explore your inner sky. This consider madness to to shut up, to be quiet, to be in silence is considered crazy out there. If you don't talk, if you don't duplicate reality all the time into words, if you don't have small talk, if you don't allow gaps, because the other might get offended, you know? You're not giving them attention. If you are silent, it's like you are self-centered and then the other is thinking it's impolite, you are ignoring them. Why are you silent? Why are you talking? I'm glad you are amused. Because <laughs> really it's a... If you zoom out... I don't know if I can illustrate it. But if you zoom out far enough and you see these creatures that we are, top of the food chain on this planet, right? Have no worries of food and this, okay, maybe not enough money for everything, but nobody will go to bed hungry. Uh, the monkeys cannot say that. The pisotes cannot say this. Look how courageous they are. They have to come to the kitchen, they have to risk themselves, yeah? No creature on this forest is waking up with that kind of certainty. Now they are waking up. 70% of the creatures here are nocturnal, active at night. Now they are waking up. None of them is waking for, with certainty that there is food, water, that they will not be hunted. They have to camouflage, they have to stay alert, they have to be sharp, they have to... Every day, every day. They lose it one day, they are gone. That's why I like to photograph wildlife. 
That's my passion, wildlife photography. To go to all these remote corners of the earth where humans are guests. And to go and find these animals and birds, animals, and look at them. On land, in the air, under water, wherever. Just give me wildlife. Around wildlife. I'm getting drunk. Because it's never repeating, you know. I look at the bird, I look at the fish, at the sharks, at the morails or the whales or the lions or gorillas or anything, any it's always present. It's always here and now. And there is no history, there is no future, it's here and now, always alert. It's always have to be there present to survive. And look at us, top of the food chain, domesticated reality, instead of, they have to ad adapt to life. They have to adjust themselves all the time. Rainy season, dry season, winter, summer, climate change. All the time to, they have to adapt. If they don't, especially in this time, they will perish. We don't have to adapt. We are the only species that adapted life to us. We don't need to go hunting, we don't need to go chasing for food. We grow food. We grow animals, we grow food. We are not dependent on nature. We adapt life to us. We need more food. We cut more forest, more agriculture. Here, cut another rainforest, more cows, grow more soya, destroy life. This is why we are the only species that is getting overpopulated. We and our satellite species, those who learned how to munch from us. This is the only species that are overpopulating. All the rest is in decline because of us, because we adapted life to us. Because if we need more energy, we we'll create another dam, we we'll block another river, there. More hydraulic energy, more masters of the planet, top of the food chain. When you zoom out and you look at us, it is a comic tragedy. On one hand we are so privileged, on the other hand, as a species, not individual, this piece is so poor, so disconnected from ourselves, from the planet, so more and more and more, and still at the end of the day, struggling to find drops of happiness, of bliss. We are an insane species. You have to be crazy because you want to get off this insanity or what they call sanity. That you have to chase and you have to become somebody in your life.
That's why we had to create Pachamama. Because there was no possible life on this planet that could fit. After traveling and exploring the world and becoming an outsider with no way back past the cross, the, the, the point of no return, we had to create a tailor made lifestyle because anything that was offered to us was meant shrink, contract, enter some box that is just not spacious enough for the spirit that grew in many years of traveling. Zoom out and see that we live in paradise. We are the fortunate generation. Twenty, thirty years ago to come to Costa Rica would be difficult, you know? Maybe 40 years ago, 50 years ago, would be difficult. Airplanes were more, you know, not. The trips that we have made in, in the remote corners of the earth, safari in Africa, in the Amazon, in the Arctic, in underwater, all these things 50 years ago would be really difficult to do. Really. Traveling and it's not like this today. And 20 years from now, Maybe there will be no more point, because they are declining the wildlife. So we are exactly in a spot where I feel privileged that I still see this beauty before it disappears. And we, there is paradise on this planet. Two billion years ago, the, when life on the planet just started all under water. I think 500 million years ago, it started on land, there was enough oxygen on land, finally. Maybe less, less than... F then the first amphibians started to get out of water and evolved into this. There is a paradise all around, and we create a hell. And we go and feel sorry for ourselves. So this talk is a reality check. Men up. Women up. Walk your path with dignity. If pain is there, experience. Don't ask me how to bypass it. If loneliness is there because you reject yourself, get overwhelmed by it until you are on your knees and until you crack and break and through the cracks of this mind, broken mind, rays of your divinity is shining on your being. I don't have shortcuts for you. I don't have tricks, I don't have teachings to give you how to bypass or to give you a quick fix. Just to put a mirror for you. Rise up, walk tall. It's okay to cry, it's okay to pain, to ache. That's how healing is happening, through pain. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. That you are not feeling today, that you feel like this and feel like this. Feel it!
feel, whatever is there. Don't write to me, I feel like this, like it's a problem. No, it's not. Feel it. This is a life, let it move you, let it reshape you. No victim trips. Walk tall and in your pain you will find wholeness also. There, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the chaos. You will see the illogical, that also here, wholeness is there. Also here, stillness, silence. Everything around is in flame, but your being is still silent. And it comes to a peak and then it dissolves. And you are. in the light. But now you are not afraid of darkness. So you are free. Now you are whole. Polarities. You embrace them both. <laughs>